Welcome back to Tiny Tasks, Big Benefits. I'm Luna Fuentes. Have you ever wondered why some people seem to manage stress well and stay healthy while others struggle? The secret often lies in simple habits, the tiny tasks that support their mind, body, and spirit. These habits, supported by ancient wisdom and proven by modern science, show that small, Everyday actions can significantly improve our well-being. In fact, this is what the Tiny Tasks podcast is all about. By exploring these practices, we can understand how they help us feel better and live happier lives. The secret to thriving in our busy world is simple. Self-care. At the end of last week's episode, Boundaries, Balance, and Bloom, we discussed the importance of self-care, especially as it relates to boundaries. But this topic is so important that we're going to spend this month doing a bit of a deep dive. Self-care, this term that has become such a buzzword in the last few years, goes beyond being just a simple trend. By jumping into the science of self-care, we're going to uncover how these practices profoundly impact our physical, mental, and emotional health. Now, let's talk about why self-care is so very important. Self-care reduces stress and anxiety. One of the primary benefits of self-care is its ability to reduce stress and anxiety. Chronic stress can lead to numerous health problems, including heart disease, depression, and a weakened immune function. Practices like mindfulness, meditation, and physical exercise have been shown to lower cortisol levels, which is the body's primary stress hormone. For instance, a recent study found that mindfulness meditation can reduce stress and improve emotional regulation by altering brain structures associated with these functions. It improves mental health. Self-care activities are crucial for maintaining our mental health. Engaging in regular self-care practices such as therapy, journaling, and social interaction can significantly reduce the symptoms of anxiety and depression. Cognitive behavioral therapy A common self-care practice has been extensively researched and shown to be effective in treating a range of mental health issues. According to the Journal of Consulting and Clinical Psychology, cognitive behavioral therapy can lead to significant improvements in mood and functioning. It enhances physical health. Physical self-care, including exercise, Proper nutrition and adequate sleep directly impacts our physical health. Regular exercise has been proven to reduce the risk of chronic diseases like heart disease, diabetes, and even certain cancers. The American Journal of Psychiatry notes that physical activity not only improves physical health, but boosts mental health by releasing endorphins, the body's natural mood enhancers. It boosts our immunity. Engaging in self-care practices can enhance the immune system. Adequate sleep, a balanced diet, and stress reduction techniques have been shown to improve immune function. A study in the Journal of Psychosomatic Research found that individuals who engage in regular relaxation practices had higher levels of immune markers indicating a more robust immune response. Self-care promotes longevity. Appropriate self-care practices are linked to increased longevity. Research shows that individuals who maintain healthy lifestyles, manage stress effectively, and engage in regular physical and mental self-care tend to live longer 
and healthier lives. A recent study published found that strong social connections and a healthy lifestyle can increase our life expectancy by up to a decade. Self-care can improve cognitive function. Regular self-care activities can enhance our cognitive function and protect us against cognitive decline. Activities that stimulate the brain, such as reading, puzzles, learning new languages, or new skills can improve memory and our cognitive abilities. Research in the neurobiology of aging suggests that mental stimulation and stress reduction techniques can slow the progression of age-related cognitive decline and improve our overall brain health. Self-care can enhance our emotional resilience. Self-care builds emotional resilience, enabling individuals to better cope with life's challenges. Practices like mindfulness, therapy, and meditation can improve emotional regulation and thereby increase our resilience, how we bounce back to life's challenges. According to a recent study in the Journal of Clinical Psychology, mindful practices can enhance emotional stability and reduce the impact of stressors on our mental health. Self-care can also help us build healthy relationships. Engaging in self-care can improve our interpersonal relationships on many levels. When individuals take time to care for their own needs, they're better equipped to maintain healthy, supportive relationships with others in their lives. Research in the Journal of Social and Clinical Psychology highlights that self-care practices such as maintaining social connections and engaging in meaningful activities can enhance relationship satisfaction and our overall well-being. We discussed a little bit about what self-care is not last week, but as a reminder, or if you haven't listened to the episode Balance and Bloom, self-care is not just sheer indulgence. It may feel temporarily better to have a spa day or buy a pretty thing that we feel we deserve, but this isn't actually self-care in the practical sense, nor does it provide us with relief from stress or many of the long-term tools to move forward in a healthier life. Before we get into the nitty-gritty of what self-care is and how to fortify our self-care toolkit, Let's talk about the thing that no one ever talks about, the guilt. In my coaching work with clients who want to improve their boundaries, one of the most common themes that comes up is these people are nurturers. They're good people who keep the peace, don't rock the boat, and more commonly have been taught from an early age that they must look after everyone else first. This so deeply impacts not only their perspective on boundaries, but also on where they as a person fall in their own priority list. And you already know what I'm about to say. They are last on the list. And that's if they're even on the list. So why the guilt? This guilt surrounding self-care is deeply rooted in cultural societal, and psychological factors that shape our perceptions of personal well-being. Cultural and societal norms play a huge role in the guilt that can come with self-care. Many cultures emphasize selflessness and the importance of putting others' needs before our own. From a young age, individuals are often taught that being a quotes, good person, involves sacrificing personal desires for the benefit of others. This cultural conditioning often leads to the belief that taking time for oneself is selfish or indulgent, creating this internal conflict when we attempt to prioritize self-care. In many societies, particularly those with strong work ethics, There is this pervasive belief 
that hard work and productivity are the ultimate measures of a person's worth. This mindset can make it difficult to justify any time spent on self-care activities that are perceived as unproductive or frivolous. As a result, we may feel guilty for taking a break, engaging in leisure activities, or doing anything that doesn't directly contribute to work or our caregiving responsibilities. Psychologically, the guilt associated with self-care can come from deeply ingrained beliefs about our own self-worth and our identity. Many people derive their sense of value from their ability to care for others, whether it's family, friends, or colleagues. For these people, prioritizing self-care can feel like a betrayal of their core identity as providers or caregivers. And this belief can make it challenging to recognize the importance of self-care and to accept that caring for oneself is not only acceptable, but is necessary for sustained well-being. In addition, individuals who struggle with low self-esteem or feelings of inadequacy might find it particularly difficult to prioritize self-care These individuals often believe that they don't deserve the care and attention, leading to guilt when they attempt to focus on their own needs. This self-critical mindset can perpetuate a cycle of neglecting self-care and feeling guilty for even considering it. Gender roles and expectations can also contribute to the guilt that is associated with self-care. In many cultures, women are socialized to be nurturing and self-sacrificing, often taking on the role of a primary caregiver within the family. This societal expectation can make it particularly difficult for women to prioritize self-care without experiencing guilt. On the other hand, men may face societal pressures to be stoic and self-reliant, which also can create feelings of guilt when they seek out self-care practices that are perceived as a sign of weakness. And of course, we have to talk about the media and social media. The media plays a significant role in shaping our perceptions of self-care and the guilt that can be associated with it. Social media platforms in particular often portray idealized versions of self-care that are unattainable for many people. These portrayals can create unrealistic expectations and contribute to feelings of inadequacy and guilt when one's own self-care practices fall short. Additionally, the constant comparison to others can often lead to a sense of guilt for taking time for ourselves when others appear to be managing just fine without such breaks. So how do we overcome guilt and embrace self-care? Overcoming the guilt associated with self-care requires a shift in mindset, a reframing, and a recognition of the importance of self-care. It's essential to understand that self-care is not a selfish act, but a necessary component of maintaining overall well-being. By prioritizing self-care, we can better support our own health and in turn be more effective in our roles as caregivers, professionals, and members and participants in our community. I often will use the analogy of pouring from a cup. In our support, service, and pouring out to others, we cannot pour from an empty cup. And self-care is the method by which we fill our own cup. Reframing self-care as an important part of our routine instead of an indulgence can help ease the feelings of guilt. Practicing self-compassion and recognizing that everyone deserves care and attention can also help in overcoming these negative feelings. Seeking support from friends, 
family, or mental health professionals can provide additional encouragement and validation in the journey toward embracing self-care. Now that we have our heads around why self-care is so very important and how to work at overcoming the guilt, what's the tiny task that will get us bigger benefits for our own well-being? Now, before I let you in on the tiny task, I want to acknowledge that I've grouped these into three main categories of self-care, all of which we'll talk about in depth this month. The categories are physical self-care, mental and emotional self-care, and social and spiritual self-care. Much of the time, we don't even know where we could improve our self-care. The very first step is determining what areas of our well-being need attention. To help you with figuring that out, this tiny task is the self-care quiz. You can download the free quiz by clicking in the link in the episode description. If you're not able to download the free quiz or would rather write it down, I'll walk through the questions here. First, write the answer format for all of the questions. This will be how you answer the questions and the points that are assigned. Number one, never. Number two, rarely. Number three, sometimes. Number four, often. And number five, always. So now if you're ready, here are the questions. Under the category of physical self-care, how often do you engage in physical exercise or activities that get your body moving? Do you eat a balanced diet that includes a variety of nutrients? And how often do you get seven to nine hours of sleep each night? Under the category of mental and emotional self-care, do you take time to relax and unwind each day? How often do you engage in activities that stimulate your mind, such as reading or puzzles? Do you practice mindfulness or another type of meditation regularly? How often do you feel in control of your emotions and able to manage your stress effectively? Now under social self-care, do you spend quality time with friends or family? How often do you feel supported by your social network? Do you communicate openly and honestly with those close to you. Under the category of spiritual self-care, do you engage in activities that give you a sense of purpose or meaning? How often do you take time for reflection or introspection? Do you participate in spiritual or religious practices that are meaningful to you? Under the category of personal self-care, how often do you set aside time for hobbies or interests that you enjoy? Do you feel you have a good work-life balance? And how often do you take time to celebrate your achievements and acknowledge your strengths? Now, rate yourself on each question. The number of the answers is the points that you'll assign per section. Total up your sections. Now the scoring can be a little bit tricky. You may want to write this down or just download the free worksheet. Scores between 13 and 15 for 15 point sections or scores between 17 and 20 for 20 point sections indicate a strong self-care routine in that category. Scores between 9 and 12 points or 13 and 60 points suggest a need for improvement. 
Scores below 9 for 15-point sections or below 13 for 20-point sections indicate that you'll benefit from focusing more on self-care activities in that category. Self-care is an important practice that deeply enhances our physical, mental, and emotional health. Taking care of ourselves is not selfish, but necessary, and this is supported by extensive scientific research. Despite feeling guilty due to cultural and societal pressures, understanding the science behind self-care highlights its importance in living a balanced, healthy, and happier life. By prioritizing self-care, we not only improve our well-being, but we also become better at supporting and connecting with others. And ultimately, in a world that often demands we put ourselves last, choosing to prioritize ourselves is the most radical act of self-love. If today's conversation sparked a flame of insight for you, or if by using these tiny tasks, you're seeing big benefits in your daily life, don't keep that to yourself. Help spread the word by hitting like, and if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Your ratings and reviews not only brighten our day, but also help others find us so they too can start transforming their tiny tasks into big benefits. Every little bit of support helps keep this show alive and kicking. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, it's tiny tasks that eventually lead to big benefits in your life's journey.